World War II, Steven Spielberg, Austin Butler. This show, it felt like it was made for me. Is it good? Let's talk about it. What's up, Fleek fans? Welcome back to the channel. From the creator of Band of Brothers and all the people I mentioned before, this is Masters of the Air. First couple episodes dropping on Apple Plus this weekend. We're going to talk about those. I've seen the whole season, but I will not spoil anything. Trust me. So you are happy? A girl with riding through is hard to find. During World War II, five miles above the ground and behind enemy lines, ten men inside a bomber known as Flying Fortress battle unrelenting flocks of German fighters. This is rated TV mature, and it comes to us from, well, a lot of people, but like I mentioned, Band of Brothers, one of the best limited series of all time, one of the best experiences I've ever had. And John Orloff has been involved in a lot of good over the years. You also have Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks on as producers, and a really good cast. You've got Elvis... I mean, Austin Butler. I mean, look, he's doing the Elvis voice the whole time, but I found Buck to be a good character. I found Callum Turner's character, Bucky, not that one, to be a good character. And I am just really like, in that first episode, yeah, I'm really liking what we're seeing thus far. Later on, uh, Barry Keoghan's character comes in. He's not naked this time. He's, he's got clothes on. Good grief, he's naked! Masters of the Air is, if you know anything about me, some of my favorite movies over the year. You know, war pictures, war films, these types of movies and shows, they resonate with me. I love seeing people, characters, get put in these situations because A, they've got to figure things out. How am I going to survive? But B, it's also the notion of knowing that you're going on this mission that gives you like a 50-50 shot of survival. That is as intense as it gets, it allows us to get attached to these characters through uh, this madness happening, as opposed to giving us a ton of good buildup in the first episode. We're kind of just thrown in here. We get that as we go, but I did feel a lack of a connection in episode one. Thankfully, the more you get to know these characters, see them in their, their social life side of things, but also in the midst of the action and creating those connections, some of them which ultimately are, you know, Finite. Oh shit, I'm sorry. It's a war film. I'm not going to tell you who bites the dust, but there are some characters that bite the dust here. And, you know, every time I would really get attached to somebody, I, I knew their lives would be in danger. At the same time, a show like this, uh, reflecting what happened in real life, in the air, during World War II, you never really know what's going to happen. And you can't feel this safe connection with anyone who's going to war because there's a chance they may not come back. And I got that from this show. As we went along and we were learning more about these characters and I was finally getting that development I was looking for, I'm getting the fear that is instilled in them that's transferring to me while I'm watching. And frankly, if you're watching a war movie and that's the feeling that you're getting, it's doing its job. Same thing with the TV show. Although because it's a TV show, there are plenty of episodes to flesh out these characters, to allow you to really sink into this world, a world that feels timely and appropriate, but also epic, intense, and, uh, Terrifying. I think all of those emotions shine through. I love the fact that Steven Spielberg's involved. You can feel his involvement in this show. I don't know what Tom Hanks did, but hey, Tom Hanks is a producer as well. Look, it's stacked across the board. The performances, I don't want to say they fully elevate what is a bad script. No, it's not a bad script. It's not as good of a script as like what Band of Brothers had to offer because you get to spend more time with those characters in the beginning. But the performances are elevating almost every aspect of this, like a Callum Turner, uh, like a Barry Keoghan. Everyone is doing a great job in this show. And I was really getting attached to the situation, uh, even more so than the characters. That's a good thing. You're invested in the men here, but you're also invested in their fate. You're invested in uh, the idea of survival in general. And, you know, they're answering questions that I've probably had watching movies like this before. What do you have to do if you've got a pee in the cockpit? Well, we'll do this, this, and this. What about if this happens, something explodes, how are you going to survive that? What are you going to do when you are put to the test? And Masters of the Air builds that intensity so beautifully, and it looks beautiful. For a TV show on Apple+, Plus, and I know Apple+, Plus, they've got some, got some good things going on right now, but this looks great. I, admittedly, when I got to the final few episodes, the effects weren't as good as they were in the beginning, but... I'm watching the screeners, so I don't, I don't know if they're going to change that. They could change that. I feel like they could. The choreography during some of those air sequences is really fun to watch. And if you're in this for the action, it may not provide you as much as you're hoping for, but 
you're also probably going to be in it for the characters. And I ended up really liking these characters. I ended up having a really good experience with this show. And I love the fact that they're only dropping a few episodes at a time because it feels like one you need some time after every episode. Now, for me, I did a full binge session. Probably not the best idea, but I was so hooked. Part of me wanted to keep going, even if I would have only gotten two episodes. So it's one that I think a lot of people are going to get really hooked on if you love war pictures, if you love uh, something like a Catch-22 or something like a Band of Brothers or any of those things. It's not overly artistic. It's very straightforward. It's it's like an old-fashioned type of war movie we would get in the 80s and 90s, uh, in 2024, obviously, but I'm okay with that. It didn't have to be anything extra. I'm okay with the simplicity and just kind of focusing in on the emotions and it did a nice job. Look, it's well crafted. It gets better as it goes. I love this setting. I think World War II is fascinating and explores that in a good way. It's very atmospheric in that way. And before I give you my score for this Apple TV Plus show, what is your favorite war show or movie set in and around World War II? Does this make it up there for you? Or do you just, do you just hate war movies? Because if you do, you Probably won't like this. I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? Also, if you'd like more reviews like this, dropping that like would help out this channel quite a bit. While it could have used a bit more style, Masters of the Air is a beautiful yet gut-wrenching look into the lives of these brave men. The production quality is spectacular, and the performances elevate the material. That is already pretty impressive. So, yeah, I had a really good time. An issue here, a small nitpick there, pacing occasionally, but for the most part, Masters of the Air. If you like this kind of thing, you're going to like this. It's very straightforward. Um, but I, I encourage you to give it a shot. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. we got more reviews and uh, TV countdown. That'll be fun.